the Grand Master Knight falls in full swing, I want to showcase a build for each class which can be universally used across all Nightfalls whilst being extremely effective and able to clutch in a tough situation. Titans are up first, and it will be insane to suggest anything except Strand with Banner of War. But this season it has a solar twist as the artifact mods enable the effect of Radiant, Scorch and Ignite without the requirements of being on a solar subclass. So you get the best of arguably the two strongest titan classes all in one. And since Grandmaster adds and champions are rather tanky, this normal problem instead allows the solar mod loop to shine. It all starts with Flint Striker, scoring rapid precision hits and the solar weapon grants Radiant. And while the Radiant buff is active, not only do you get a weapon damage boost of 25%, but this also enables the other solar mods of Rays of Precision, Torch and Kindling Trigger. Respectively, these provide the benefits of precision final blows causing an ignition, increased solar weapon damage versus targets affected by strand or stasis debuffs, and applying 30 scorch stacks to any target hit with a solar weapon. And with all of this solar support, for your energy and heavy weapons, it would be crazy to not run solar. For weapon of choice for most scenarios, I'd definitely go with the King of Solar, Dragon Breath. The amount of damage and ignitions you can put out of this is insane. It can function as boss damage, champion stunning for both barrier and unstoppable, and effective ad clear. Galahorn and Legendary Rockets is a common choice, but I would argue that this is better. For an energy weapon, take your pick of the top solar options. The Aulis Bane, Abyss Defiant, Parabellum, anything like that. If you want to use a specific type of champion stunning capable weapon, this is where to do it. But you need not worry about barrier champions. A benefit of Radiant is while active any weapon has barrier piercing properties, effectively giving you anti-barrier options as a default. This even applies to non-solar weapons allowing you to be much more lenient with your weapon choices. I like running a combination of a special weapon in the kinetic slot, either a 1-2 punch shotgun or fusion rifle, solar primary weapon and the dragon's breath or galahor. But that is just the weapons, how does this build play? To be the most effective, you should alternate between chaining ignitions when you can, then move into a more aggressive playstyle using your abilities and aspects. This aggressive playstyle is all about clearing out enemies as fast as possible but not dying in the process. This can be sustained in Grandmaster content using damage resistance provided by Woven Mail and the healing from the Banner of War. And weirdly enough, it doubles up as a support build as both of these effects are able to be shared with teammates. Knowing when to push in to utilise your melee based abilities is the main thing which needs to be understood. Anyone can charge straight ahead and punch some random enemy, but this won't really end well when you can be taken out in seconds. Looking for a lower health target away from the pack to kickstart Banner of War is obviously one way, as is clearing out most enemies with your weapons and then getting in a 1 2 punch shotgun melee combo on one of the remaining few. You could also use a fragment Fed of Warding to grant woven mail and all pickup, an alternative way of getting it instead of being near a destroyed tangle. But once you do have woven mail and banner of war active, it's time to get aggressive. Outward melees will recharge very quickly whilst you maintain woven mail, and these melees can be improved by the exotic of choice Symphoseps, increasing damage by 165% when near three or more enemies. Banner of War also improves melee damage, as will a one-two punch shotgun should you choose to use one. Altogether, these melees will quickly dispatch of any rank and file enemies and can even take out a champion in just a few swipes. Using these abilities as much as possible is the key to clearing GMs in a good time. The same applies to the super too, in terms of improved by Symphoseps and the Banner of War. It's essentially the same as powered melees, but you can also suspend enemies with the ult fire. This super can melt champions and deal heavy damage to bosses. Be sure to not be too far into enemy lines when the super ends though, as it is easy to get a little bit too carried away. So that's the idea behind it. We've covered the banner of war and the melee ability in detail. Here's the other options I'd recommend running. Into the Fray is an aspect which allows the Woven Mail to be provided to yourself and nearby allies 
upon destroying a Tango or activating a suit. Ideally, this will be used alongside Thread of Warding to keep Woven Mail active the majority of the time. And while you do have Woven Mail active, this aspect will also increase the recharge rate for your melee ability. And for a grenade, I like to use Grapple as it shares the benefits provided to melee attacks, such as Symphoseps, 1-2 Punch and Banner of War. It can get you into or away from enemies very quickly and deals even more damage when a charged melee and in a larger radius on top of applying unravel. Though it can be risky, and if you are not confident in landing that one two punch grapple melee combo, which can be quite tight on timing, there is an alternative. Jackal grenades can also be used to great effect. Suspending enemies of it makes for easy targets to start your melee combos, and can double up as a way to stop unstoppable champions. And as for aspects, they complement the ability side of Strand Titan, and are as follows. The Thread of Generation, where damage from any source reduces grenade cooldown. Thread of Fury, where dealing damage with a Tangle Explosion reduces melee cooldown. Thread of Warding, another way to grant woven mail, this time by collecting it up with power. And Thread of Propagation, collecting it all with power also gives strand weapons unraveled grounds. This one can be swapped with Thread of Ascent, if not running a strand weapon. I will bring up on screen a full list of armor mods and artifact mods. A solar artifact package is a must to fully take advantage of the strongest weapon buffs this season. While the other options are flexible, including champion stunning options and a few strand support mods, again if you're running a strand weapon. Armor mods are typical for what you would expect. I want to highlight however running one copy of recuperation, as this gives instant health on all cuts. You can double down with a copy of Better Already for additional health restoration too, should you want to. Otherwise, run Solar Surges, Match Resist mods to the Strike Singe, and a copy of Heavy Handed and Strand Solar Combination Siphon are more than enough for Orb Generation. Finally, a few more higher end tips which you can choose to utilise. Instead of a traditional heavy weapon which we've previously mentioned, you could instead opt to run a Tractor Cannon. A target hit by this will be weakened by 30%, making it much easier to melt with your abilities or focused fire from teammates. But it's also effective against overload champions. Any one two punch shotgun will do, but the sword break from throw to zen is probably the best option. Being strand, it can generate tangles when unraveling ground is active. It can roll pugilist alongside one two punch, so it can be used to regenerate melee abilities and it will cause explosions if used after a melee final blow. If you have a teammate create a grapple point, or grapple to a tangle, you can continually 1-2 punch grapple melee, as long as the point remains active. This is one of the best damage sources in the game, but is quite risky. And while using a strand charge melee, you don't need to reapply 1-2 punch every swipe. You could activate 1-2 punch and then quickly follow up with two melee attacks. Both of these would have their damage boosted. So, that's for love. Thank you for watching.